Hello, everyone. This is Pastor Allen from the Garrison Church of God. I am so glad you joined me for this new series of messages. This particular series is entitled Getting Up, Going Up. Uh, we're looking at the Psalms of Ascent. They begin with Psalm 120 and go through Psalm 134. It's 15 different Psalms that talk about uh, worship and the experience of worship in our lives as we prepare ourselves to worship the Lord. I want to talk to you about the helper from Psalm 121 today. There were three gathering feasts uh, appointed in Judah. Passover, the Feast of Weeks, which we call Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. They're all found in Deuteronomy chapter 16 and Exodus chapter 23 and Exodus chapter 34. Interestingly, Jewish people still recite these psalms on the night prior to the Feast of Booths. Psalm 121 is often used by Jewish parents in the delivery room uh, as a prayer for safety during the birth process. And very often they will also place a copy of this psalm uh, in the bassinet or the cradle or the crib and in the baby carriage. And the idea is that they are asking for, or it is a plea for God's protection and an expression of trust in him. In John's gospel, Jesus meets a woman who is a Samaritan. The Samaritans and the Jews worshipped in two different places. They worshipped the same God, but they worshipped in two different temple locations. Mount Gerizim was the temple where the Samaritan people worship, and there is still a Samaritan temple on top of Mount Gerizim even to this day. The Jewish people worshipped in Jerusalem at the temple on Mount Zion. Jesus meets this Samaritan woman at a well in John chapter 4, and they get into a theological discussion and a discussion of practical things and all kinds of different back and forth between them. But in verse 23, uh, she asks him a question about where they need to worship. Is it, in, is it on Mount Gerizim or is it, up, or is it down in Mount Zion? And Jesus says to her that God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. When we think about that concept of spirit and truth, Psalm 121 talks about trusting God. If we are going to truly worship God, we must first trust him. We must trust him with all that is within us and all of our circumstances. Uh, the psalm begins with, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence comes my help. Early Christians really liked the story of the Samaritan woman. And uh, a lot of their artwork in the uh, fourth century or the 300s uh, incorporated uh, motifs about this particular story from John chapter 4. I think it's probably because a lot of Roman people could identify with this woman, uh, with her lifestyle and with some of the struggles that she had. But I think it was also because of the question of worship, because these people really wanted to worship God. But how do you make sense out of all of this process about worship. The Jerusalem temple was far larger and far more elaborate than the Samaritan temple, but the Samaritans took a great deal of pride in the humbleness of their temple and the fact that they uh, probably thought because of that they were more godly than the Jewish people with their gaudy temple. But the truth of the matter is that what God really wanted were people that would worship him. This Samaritan woman probably didn't think that God thought very much of her, period, because of her lifestyle and the problems that she was experiencing in life. And a lot of us come to God with a sense that 
God doesn't want us or doesn't care about us. Psalm 120 begins with that cry of the heart for deliverance and that cry of the heart about what's going on and living in a world of brokenness. If you read through that psalm, it talks about living in a world of brokenness. And we certainly do live in a world of brokenness, but Psalm 121 is like a shout of joy that cries out to God, I trust you in the midst of this circumstance. I trust that you have my best interest at heart. I trust that you will work things out in my life. We have to live like that. We have to understand that worship begins with trust in God. Trusting him for what we cannot accomplish and do for ourselves. I want to take you for a brief moment back 2,000 years ago. If you were back in that time frame when Jesus walked the earth, the temple would be just nearing completion. It was one of the great wonders of the world. There were Jewish people from all over the civilized world that traveled to Jerusalem at least once in their lifetime to experience the temple because it was such a magnificent structure and building. Not only was the building magnificent, but the services were overwhelming and and stimulating and encouraging and, well, they were very well done. That's what amazes you when you think about it. These services were something that were well done. The Levites spent a lot of time practicing and structuring services so that they would reach a certain peak of crescendo, so they would become exciting and vibrant and alive. And so you can imagine what it was like to travel to Jerusalem. If you lived in Palestine, you would go three times a year, especially if you were a Jewish man over the age of 12. Uh, you were expected to go three times a year to present yourself before the Lord. That's what was required according to Deuteronomy chapter 16 in Exodus chapter 23, and Exodus chapter 34, they all set up the requirement that three times a year, Jewish people would be required to go to the temple. They would be required to stand in the presence of the Lord, to present their sacrifices before the Lord. So this was an important event. They were exciting and dynamic mo moments uh, as you would see large crowds of people working their way toward Jerusalem before these events. And you would meet people that you hadn't seen for a while. You would make new friends. You would talk. And all the time there's joking and laughter. And, and there's also tension because the Romans are running everything and they're upset and concerned and and you're caught up with the moment. But as you're traveling along, you're hearing somebody every once in a while with a booming voice, booming out one of the Psalms of Ascent. And probably one of the favorite ones would have been Psalm 121. It's very likely it was a very jaunty and exciting tune, a, a tune that would excite your imagination. And you would enter the temple with a sense of, of trust in God and trust in his power and his ability to work and do things in your life. I'm sure that many who stood at those feasts, even probably while Jesus was standing among them, were wondering, is the Messiah here right now? Is the Messiah in our midst at this very moment? There's that anticipation, that excitement, that desire for God to really step into the circumstance and change things. 
worship begins when we trust God in the circumstances of our life. And when we begin to expect that he will do something in our lives. That he will touch our lives by his grace and by his power. That's part of what worship is all about. It is expecting God to do something wonderful. Do you expect God to do something wonderful in your life today? I hope you do. I pray that you'll have a wonderful day. God bless you. We hope to see you in church. Take care.